Welcome to Lesson 6, which roughly covers pages 45 to 53 of the Automate the Boring Stuff with Python textbook. The next flow control statement is the while loop. You can make a block of code execute over and over again as long as the while statement's condition is true. So let's open up a new file editor window by clicking on File, New File, and enter the following code. Spam equals zero, while spam is less than five, colon, print hello world spam equals spam plus one and we can save this as while example dot pi and when you press f5 to run it the string hello world will be printed five times this is because spam starts off as zero and as long as the condition spam is less than five is true the while loop will keep looping. Inside the while loop, the spam variable is increased by one, and at the end of the loop, the execution jumps back to the start of the while statement and rechecks this condition. And if it's still true, it enters the block again. So this is why the block runs five times, because after the fifth time, spam is set to the value five, and the while loop's value, uh, while loop's condition five is less than five would then be false. So the execution just continues on with the rest of the program. When the execution runs through a loop, we call that an iteration. So we say that this while loop iterates five times. On each iteration, the, spamming, the spam variable was increased by one. So let's compare while and if statements. So while statement looks similar to an if statement. You can see right here, here's the original code on the right. And here's the same code except with an if statement instead of a while statement on the left. The difference is in how they behave. At the end of an if block, the program execution continues on with the rest of the program. But at the end of a while block, the execution jumps back to the start of the while statement and rechecks that condition. So if the condition is still true, then the execution re-enters the while block. It keeps doing this and looping around through this code until the first time that this condition is false, and then it continues on with the rest of the program. So let's try writing a new program. Open up a new file editor window, and type in the following code. Name equals blank string, uh, while name does not equal your name, colon, print, please type your name. Name equals input, and then go back to the original indentation and have print thank you. I'm going to save this as yourname.py and press F5 to run the program. So the very start, the name variable has been set to the blank string. This means that this condition is true because blank string does not equal your name. So now we are here we've printed out please type your name and the program is waiting for us to type in some code. So I'm gonna type in my name, Al, and it's printed out please type your name again. This is because at the end of this block, the execution has jumped back here and rechecked this condition. Name is now set to the string Al, which still does not equal your name. So it's printed, so it's entered the loop again and printed this out and is now expecting me to type in a name. So I could type in Albert, Al Swigert. But until I type your name, this condition will constantly be true. But once name is set to the string your name, then this condition that your name does not equal your name is false. And then the execution continues on with the rest of the program and prints out thank you. <laughs> Little uh, programmer humor there. So here's a flow chart of this program. You can see right here, we've initially set name equals to blank string. And here's the while statement's condition. As long as it's true, it will keep looping around. The first time it's false though, it'll continue on with the rest of the program. This is an example of input validation. Uh, when the input function is called, the user can type in anything. If you ask the user their age, instead of a number, they could type in Abraham Lincoln or type in a negative number. So loops are a good way to ensure that the program keeps asking the user until they've entered some valid input for your program. Now, there's a certain kind of bug that you can have with loops called an infinite loop. 
Let's type this into the interactive shell. While true colon print hello. In the interactive shell, you can end a, end a block by entering a blank line. So once I enter this blank line, this code will execute. Whoa, so that's a bug. So since the condition is always true, because the value true always evaluates to the value true, so this loop keeps looping forever. So if you ever get stuck in an infinite loop like this, just press the control C hotkey. This will cause a keyboard interrupt error to, uh, to happen in your program and it causes your program to crash and stop immediately. There are two new kinds of statements that can go inside of a while loop, break and continue. The break statement causes the execution to immediately jump out of the loop. It doesn't even check the condition again, it just immediately goes to the first line after the end of the loop. So we can change our program to look like this. Instead of this condition, we can just make this an infinite loop by typing while true. And after here, we can add if name equals your name. And if so, break. So just like before, this program asks the user to literally type in your name, and it will keep looping until you do. In this program, however, we don't break out of this loop when this condition is false, because it'll never be false. True will always evaluate to true. So instead, what we have is we have a if statement, which checks if name is equal to your name, and if so, it executes this break statement. And it's this break statement that causes the execution to immediately jump out of this loop and then continue on with the rest of the program and print out thank you. Here's a flowchart for this modified program that we've made. You can see it still has a loop. In fact, this is an infinite loop. This condition true will never be false. So I've added this X right here. This path will never happen. So the way that we break out of this loop is by checking this if statements condition if name equals equals your name, and if so, it executes that break statement, which then causes the execution to move beyond this while loop. So in this case, the code doesn't really do anything new, but break statements are pretty useful if you have several different places inside of a while loop that could possibly cause the execution to leave from that point. Like break statements, continue statements are also used inside loops. When the program execution reaches a continue statement, the execution immediately jumps back to the start of the loop and reevaluates the loop's condition. Let's create a new program really quickly that says spam equals zero, while spam is less than five, colon, increment spam by one. We have this one if statement here that checks if spam is equal to three. In that case, we'll execute a continue statement. And then after that, print spam is, and we'll just display the value of spam. Actually, since this is an integer, we're going to have to get the string version of that before we can do string concatenation with spam is. So I'm going to save this and then press F5 to run it. You can see the output is spam1, spam2, and then spam3 is missing. That's because on that iteration, when spam is set to 3, this condition is true, and the continue statement is executed. So when continue is executed, the execution immediately jumps back to the start of the while loop. So in that case, this print function call never happens. And so that's why you see spam is, whatever the value is, for everything, except in that case, spam was equal to three, because we hit this continue block, and so we didn't reach this part, we just immediately went back to the start. To recap, while statements are similar to if statements, except that once the execution reaches the end of a while statements block, it jumps back to the start and rechecks the condition. If you ever get stuck in a loop, or you just want to quickly terminate your Python program, you can just press Control C. A break statement will cause the execution to immediately leave the loop without rechecking the, the condition. And a continue statement will cause the execution to immediately jump back to the start of a loop and recheck the condition.